Hi, uh, welcome to the MacGuffin Podcast. Uh, we're here for another Top 5. I'm Ed. And I'm Alan. And today we're going to talk about our Top 5 movies that are involve acts of redemption. I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, somebody who just, by the end, is redeeming their, themselves. Their sins are forgiven. Yeah, absolutely. Or it, kind some, of. somewhat forgiven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhat. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'll start with my number 5, okay. which I went way back to Sunrise, the classic silent film. Yes. Um... Um, it's about if you haven't seen it, it's one of one of the greats. Uh, I think it should have won Best Picture of the year it came out. It's about a guy who basically is, ha- is having an affair uh, on his cheating on his wife, and he has a plot to he was a plot to murder her, but do- just ba- barely doesn't. Like he comes back from it mm-hmm. and spends the rest of the movie falling back in love with her, and. It through through love, it is actually pretty much a story of redemption on for for him. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is considered one of the most romantic movies ever too, and it's very beautifully shot with a lot of subjective imagery to it. Yeah, absolutely. A um, little bit of a spoiler alert: <gasps> this movie will be talked about again. Ooh! Let's move on to my number five. <laughs> uh, my number five is another classic film uh, from 1942, and we've talked about this a lot, which is why I put it at number five: Casablanca. Uh, when Thought Humphrey about Bogart myself, yeah. decides to stop thinking about himself and let Victor Laszlo and Ilsa get on that plane. Remember, people, in the scene in the bar where Humphrey Bogart, Rick Blaine, is drinking um, and Ilsa walks in on him, he pretty much just lays it out on her and calls her a slut, <laughs> pretty much. And damn, he really like let it go. And throughout the entire movie, you could tell that what he's doing is wrong, but his damn pride was keep, keep holding him back. And we aren't really sure until the very, very moment where he says you're getting on that plane that he knows that okay what's happening to us doesn't amount to a hill of beans you know compared to the rest of the world and that scene is just so awesome and one of the classic moments and like you mentioned before one of the great speeches that he gives also he's sacrificing both of their desires for the betterment of the world Mm -hmm. instead of getting on the plane or being with Ilsa, he walks off with, <laughs> with with a guy into this into the fog and totally. who knows whatever happens there. It was a beautiful relationship, you know. Good, good very good choice. Well, when it comes to redemption, I also think of very dark stories and it doesn't get much darker than my number 4 pick, which is Bad Lieutenant. Uh, oh. starring Harvey Keitel. Now, actually, I, I both both versions of Bad Lieutenant are I I actually think are really good. I actually yeah. recently saw the Nicolas Cage, the Port of Call one, that's a, and that's I was great. like, wow, it's way better than I thought it was mm-hmm. going to be. But I am going to go back to the to the, the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, a horrible person you're watching. The Bad Lieutenant is basically Terrible. about a cop who has no moral compass. He does drugs. He drinks. He he semi-rapes people. He, he is a selfish, selfish guy. But... He's he's also got a huge internal struggle. Uh, there's a, there's a lot to do with his Catholic guilt in mm-hmm. in essence. Um, yeah, you know, there's some confessions he makes to a, a nun at one point that are really you know, he's he knows he's he's terrible, but he also doesn't do anything to stop it mm-hmm. um, until the very end. There it is. It is about a small amount of redemption for him, and um, Keitel's performance is really what carries this thing through. I think it would almost be an unwatchable movie if it was a different person. Yeah, it, absolutely. Harvey Keitel, that was a great performance by him. I mean, talk about being open, right? Yeah. And letting yourself go. Yes, I mean, there's a scene where he's, yeah, he's butt-ass naked, yeah. just like this and, and all that, but it is a great performance. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's so gritty, so dark, and so disturbing that if it wasn't for that great performance, it would be unwatchable. It's yeah. yeah, but it, it is very good. It is very good. Totally. Uh, moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four act of redemption is from 1982, and it is The Verdict. I've thought about this one, too. Mr. Sidney Lumet. It's the role of Frank Galvin, played by Paul Newman, who I felt should have won the Oscar for this performance. Um, his lawyer is just 
man, he's just on his last legs. He's a drunk. Um, he's just unhinged. He's tired. He's exhausted. Um, and then he takes this malpractice suit on, and he just realizes he realizes that this is my last chance to do something right. And what's so great about this is that the family wants to settle. <laughs> They're like, just give us our money and let us go. And Paul Newman's just pretty much like, no, no, we got to take it uh, all the way. Um, I would, it wouldn't be right to me. I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if we just let this one go. And the family berates him for it and pretty much was like, hey, what are you, what are you doing, you know? Um, but it is a great performance and it is a great film uh, by Mr. Lumet, uh, the late Mr. Lumet. Um, when, when I was thinking about that movie at one point, I realized how many, Paul Newman was awesome, how many of his iconic characters hinge on this whole kind of kind of terrible loser who kind of redeems himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, The Verdict is one of the great greats, but even, you know, uh, the, hustler the Hustler and so on. Yeah, it, yeah he did, did a lot. He was great. He was good at it. Yeah. Uh, good choice. My number three, I'm going to go with one of my favorite comedies ever, Midnight Run. Ah, and, yes. Um, you, you know, often you, it's, you kind of think, well, a redemption story, but it is. De Niro's it, character. Yeah, De Niro's yeah. character really, you know, he's, he, he has no intention on, it, it, for those of you who don't know, he's a bounty hunter. He's taking Charles Grodin cross country, uh, who, you know, claims he can't fly, claims he, you know, he, he, he bitches at him all the time. <laughs> and the, uh, the majority of the movie is the two of them bitching at each other. But it is a wonderful comedy. It's mm -hmm. fabulous. And uh, um, De Niro's character is gruff. This was back when De Niro could be funny before we got annoyed with him trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, but he, he's had a lot of chances that he's blown in his life. Mm -hmm. And um, by the end, what he does for, for Charles Grodin's character is is his kind of act of redemption. Yeah, I, I actually saw this for the first time a few months ago, oh. and I was kind of startled by how good it really is. It it's is so, so entertaining. The two of them together are just yeah. magnificent. And speaking of uh, Robert De Niro's um, character, the most poignant scene to me is when he visits that his family. Yeah, and, his daughter yeah, offering him money. The and... interaction they have there is just surprisingly touching and yeah. sad. So. Okay, moving on to my number three, uh, my number three act of redemption. I chose because the character so desperately wanted to be redeemed and yet he didn't reach it quite all the way. Um, it's from 2008 and it's Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler. Uh, Mickey Rourke playing Randy the Ram Robinson. He pretty much just wasted his entire life. I mean, his daughter doesn't care about him. He has barely has any friends. His only acquaintance is a stripper, <laughs> pretty much. And all he has is his wrestling. And even his wrestling, he's kind of like at the bottom rung. I mean, he's at the bottom of the totem pole. Been. And throughout the entire movie, he's just trying to fix his life, trying to rebuild his relationship with his daughter. And at the very end, um, spoiler alert, um, he doesn't get there. I mean, despite his, the hardest th the hardest he tries, um, he's unable to build his life back up, which is what makes that final moment um, when in the ring so poignant because he realizes this is literally all that I have left. I have nothing, and if I'm going to go out, this is how I'm going to go out. Yeah, yeah. We're we're racking up quite a bunch of level lovable losers here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> my number two is. Um, I, yeah, I don't think you get any more classic than It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I that one. You know, real. if you haven't seen it, I can't imagine. You must be five years old or younger. I, I, everybody's seen this movie. Mm -hmm. But basically it's about, you know, a guy who wants to kill himself and an angel who shows him why he shouldn't. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I mean, literally by the end of the movie, you know, he, he, everything's gotten as dark as it can be for him. And literally by the end of the movie, he's praying to God, saying, please, please help me. I mean, y you talk about a, a turning, around, turning around a guy's, a guy's life. Mm -hmm. that's, the, you know, th that's the template for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jimmy Stewart was never better. The movie's, the movie's terrific. I know we've seen it a million times. We're all kind of sick of it, but... Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great. I mean, and it's on this list for a reason. I yeah. Mean, he found Zuzu's petals, right? Uh, okay. Love the old movie house. <laughs> Moving on <laughs> to my number two. I was actually thinking about putting It's a Wonderful Life, um, but I decided not to because we've talked about it so much. And instead, I replaced it with another holiday special. 
It's from 1966, and it is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Chuck Jones, Dr. Seuss, What More Can You Say, Boris Karloff, The Grinch, he's just a bit of an asshole, pretty much. I mean, all the people in Whoville want to do is just have a nice, fun, safe Christmas, and yet here's this guy who pretends he's Santa Claus, dresses his dog as uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and pretty much ruins Christmas for everyone. He steals ruins it. the roast beast, for God's sake. <laughs> he steals Christmas, and then at the very end, there's the turn, and we see his eyes just well up to be all huge, and he realizes, oh, this is what Christmas is all about, and brings it back to the people. I would like to say, I, I'm on board with you as long as we're talking about the Boris Karloff narrated cartoon. Yes, we're not talking about, about Jim the, Carrey, no. not Ron Howard's no. film. No. No. <laughs> but yes, it's, love, love, love me some Boris Karloff. Love that cartoon. It's awesome. Well, my number one is, um, you know, one of the most moving mo movies ever, Schindler's List. Mm, yeah. Because Oscar Schindler, th that it, that is a, a story of redemption. I mean, we all we all think of it as the Holocaust, the Holocaust. But remember, from this guy's perspective, he starts the movie by wanting to profiteer off of ex essentially slave labor. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> by people who are about to be, you know, who are under threat of being gassed and turned into soap. And by the end, he's actually yielding all of his worldly possessions, saying, I could have gotten, saved more people. And, you know, and, that, and I, I, when he's at, that scene at the end, I am spoiling the hell out of this. The scene at the end when he's holding up his watch, saying, I could, this could have been five more people. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot get through that dry eyed. Mm -hmm. You know, it, wow. It's amazing. I mean, the guy was a war profiteer. He was a Nazi, yes. right? And he was friends with the Nazi soldiers. And yet somehow he was able to look past all that and see the bigger picture. And you, you say that scene where, you know, he says, oh, this could have been worth five more people or whatever. That gets me. But then Spielberg continues on and shows the real, real life people. survivors yes. who exist because of this man. It's like, oh my God, yes. what the hell? Yeah, I know. Spielberg has rarely been better uh, yeah, Liam Neeson has rarely been that. Yeah, I can't say enough. It's great. Yeah. Okay, moving on to my number one. Uh, you already mentioned it. It is Sunrise. Listen, people, this movie is about a guy who cheats on his wife and his mistress almost convinces him to murder his wife. I mean, how much, how much more intense can that be? And the crazy thing about it is he almost goes through with it. I mean, mm -hmm. he is literally like this, about to do it. Um, but somehow, some way, he manages not to. And throughout the rest of that movie, it's just him and his wife trying to build up their relationship. I mean, they go, they go to the city. They go out dancing. They go to a church. They see a wedding. Um, they just go through all this um, stuff and trying to fix it. And it literally takes a storm for them <laughs> to build their relationship back up. It's such an amazing movie, it's so beautifully made. Um, the cinematography, the special effects for the time, oh my goodness. The scene I mean, where they're walking through traffic. With, walking through traffic, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the dream sequence, I mean, it's, it's amazing. People, if you haven't seen this movie, watch it right now, it's great. Uh, well, yeah, I, <laughs> what he said. Well, with that, um, that was our top five uh, acts of redemption. If you've got some uh, ideas out there, let us know at mcguffinpodcast.com, and we'll see you next time.